I found out the hard way today that my truck is not sending 12 volts to the trailer. I don't know how long this has been going on, but I'd imagine for quite a while. I was just messing with this truck. A friend, we were talking about, you know, 12 volts available at the seven way. And I was talking about this and I remember probing the truck trying to get the 12 volts to turn on back here because 12 volts is not always hot back here. It is only hot when the trailer is connected. The, the computer has determined that the trailer is connected and it sends 12 volts to the rear. Now, for me, with this truck, I've never gotten 12 volts to the rear. And it could be because this battery is so low. In here, we are well under 12 volts. Um, this is usually in storage, so this battery isn't getting tended very well, apparently. And I've got multiple GPS devices as you can see it's blinking because it's connected to the battery and it's probably causing some parasitic draw I haven't lost GPS signal or anything but yeah it's uh pretty dead it wouldn't dump I was literally at the dump and it wouldn't go up and I had to unload everything by hand it was horrible this battery though is fairly new it is a uh, a GM battery I believe I mean I dropped quite a lot of money on this battery what does it say uh, I don't know I don't know if this battery is gonna have to be replaced it should be under warranty even though it's not the battery's fault it's probably my fault uh, but nonetheless those GPS's I think are requiring a little bit more of a charge right now we've got it plugged in but what I want to show you guys is the 30 amp fuse that is blown underneath the hood i'm assuming this is the one i do remember having to do this before on my 250 and i think what happened is when i uh, the battery on a dump trailer must have just been low and if the battery is really low it goes to try to charge up the battery and the battery is demanding a very very high load and it pops that fuse so we can see this one's popped the rest of them look to be in good condition, but we only got 30 amps going to the rear. Uh, and uh, I don't know if that's enough. So I've proposed adding a charge wire to that seven way that you can activate on the upfitter switch. Then you could fuse it again, maybe for 30 amps, maybe for 40 amps. And from there, you could have more amperage going to the rear. And also too, which another thing would be cool is if we had a way to just connect the battery to the rear of the just connect the battery to the rear it's hardwired something like this maybe like a you know thicker wire like this maybe like a one aught wire it's nothing too crazy but it'd be expensive it'd have to be marine grade one aught and have it go all the way back and have a connection so that it could charge itself uh, from just having it like today we we uh, couldn't charge this battery we, we couldn't we were not charging the battery if I was at the dump and would have known that my 30 amp was blown maybe I could have I don't know if I had some extra fuses maybe I could do something about it but yeah we've only got 30 amps going to our trailer so that's our hiccup you know 30 amps that circuit you probably need 30 amps to protect that circuit but if you were closer to that seven way, you can probably add another 30 amps and be okay as long as it's not running the full distance from up here all the way to the rear. So let me go ahead and grab a new fuse and get this all hooked up and uh, I'll see you at the next scene. So yeah, this battery is absolutely cooked. It will not lift the trailer anymore. So I'm already unhooking it. I'm going to take it in and see if I can't warranty this. But maybe we can walk out with a new one because I kind of need this trailer working right now. Uh, so I'm going to get everything unhooked. Install these screws here so I don't lose them. Negative unhooked. And make sure uh, everything red. So yeah, we did try to charge it. Can't get over 10 volts. It's like two dead cells or something in it. So I don't know how that happened. This does say 21, 11, 21. Shouldn't be an issue. It's not that old. I guess it's the... Maybe I need to get a solar charger. 
or something for this because I run it so hard. But yeah, guess we'll head to the auto parts. See you guys there. All right, so we are headed back to park the trailer. Of course, I'm gonna put on my seatbelt because I would never, ever drive without it. So we are headed back to uh, dump, dump the dump trailer in its parking spot. And yeah, they didn't have anything in stock, so we're without a battery. We're testing this. I'm <laughs> within the one year warranty on this battery, but obviously there's something going on here because this is the second battery in less than a year. This battery was purchased in April. I think all these GPS trackers are taking their toll on freaking batteries. That and the truck not charging. You know, once the battery gets so dead, you can't charge it with the truck, I think. And it just pops that fuse. So I don't know if I, maybe I'll install a backup harness to the truck's batteries on all the trucks. I mean, th these batteries are so much money and it's just knocking them out. You know, if you don't know that you're killing this battery, I don't know, maybe I'll figure something. I gotta figure something out. So final verdict on the whole charging situation on the trailer. Basically, the battery was so dead, I dropped it off for warranty. They said it was good because it took a charge. So we did test the battery with our voltmeter after charging and it's holding steady at 12 volts. Does seem to lift the trailer and everything pretty good. Issues that we found though, plugging in the trailer to the two amp dedicated charger, this thing is too weak for this big battery. It's two amps, 12 volts. And when I plugged it in, before I took it in to get charged, it wasn't doing anything. It's not going to charge this battery. It's just a battery tender. It's less voltage than what comes out of the truck. And when the battery is really dead, the truck's not enough to bring it all the way back. You really need something like a jumper cable or a bigger charger in order to really get this thing to really hold up. So it's probably still good. It is a, a very high end battery, very expensive AMG. But I don't know how long my 30 amp fuse was blown on this truck and it's blown on both trucks. So something could be going on here. Uh, now, what I thought about doing with this whole situation is running a wire to the seven way and tapping our plug here back there where you can see those wires in there tapping into with a new 10 gauge wire. I went ahead and even ordered this wire in order to tap into a 10 gauge wire and put it on the upfitter switch but the issue with doing that is it has to be one or the other i could run it on the upfitter switch 12 amp charging but i'd have to eliminate the fuse because if i Leave the 30 amp fuse in here. 30 amps is perfect for a 10 gauge wire. But if I put the upfitter switch on the 30 amp circuit as well, then now I've doubled the fuse size. And that's fine because if I overlay the 10 gauge wire over top of the circuit, once it comes into one point here, this section here will be fused for double what it needs to be for at least this little bit of a section if I tap it back here. So I'll be fused for 60 amps or 70 amps because the switch I was going to use is going to be fused for 40 amps. So 70 amps of fusing is not enough to protect the wiring from here all the way through this cord going into the trailer and ultimately going to the battery and which one goes to the battery um, I'm not exactly sure which one, but it, but once you get to the battery side, it gets pretty skinny. So it needs to be even bigger than what it is. I believe it's this blue one and this white one. So we're just not charging. 
we're just not charging period um maybe something's not wired right i know when maybe maybe when this battery got replaced something didn't get done it is kind of odd that i'm having these issues out of this uh circuit so I have to see what's going on and double check that the blue and the white go this way but those are the wires that actually charge the trailer I guess I could look at here here's our blue and white well here's our white our whites are ground our grounds connected straight to the frame of the trailer as we can see right to the frame ground so coming through here our grounds connected to our negative and our blue wire is connected to our seven way in here so i think the wiring is good but i have to really think about this am i going to go forward with this would it be dangerous or anything like that well i don't know if we're in a situation where perhaps the battery was too low and it drew more than 30 amps the difference of pressure you know this battery was reading like six amps because i checked with the gps before the gps died we were the last it was seen was at six amps so we were so low on power that we were at six amps so basically the battery died and i believe it's because the gps which is right there was drawing on the battery so then you turn around and try to hook up the battery to the truck and the truck's got to charge this thing up from too low of a point blows your 30 amp fuse that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm finding I, I can't see any other problems here or issues here i just don't understand i just can't find the problems you know it just seems like our battery died from having a parasitic draw on it but I don't know comment below and tell me what you guys think about the overlay it it would only be when the switch is on but it could send the voltage requirements higher than what is needed to be so if you're driving along and you're at 60 amps fused if you leave that on if you leave that switch on you're overdoing your circuit here between that point and all the way to the back side of the trailer so all this wiring could be compromised and already actually think about this it already is because if we're fused for 30 amps they went too skinny with the gauge here to charge so this wire is too thin this one what's this what's going on here there's a fuse so it also will dump there's a red one here I don't understand why there's a red fuse here connected to the dump the motor the dump motor but our blue wire our white wire the red one I'm not sure where it goes but we're going here and yeah it's potentially too much and it's most certainly too much if we're so at least with this wire that I have this this 10 gauge 10 gauge wire I could at least upgrade some of this wiring because there's a bottleneck that I'm finding we're thin to charge this battery our wiring is pretty thin so from here going back what gauge are we we go into here i have to pull this out to see but what gauge are we in there and then at what point do we connect over to this wire and then that that wiring is a little thin you know it's not even 12 gauge it looks like a 14 gauge wire to charge this whole battery so that that's a weak link right there making it hard I mean that's probably blowing the fuse now with that being said 30 amps is not enough on paper this is what the ratings are when you look them up online so our wiring now should be fused much better than 30 amps and we're not seeing that the wires are popping or anything like that how much can we really carry now double down that's probably enough to burn through one of these wires so if you put all that onto the skinny little wires, that would be an issue. But comment below and tell me what you guys think about the overlay idea with the wiring. Or the end-all, be-all, ultimate solution would be to run a thick wire, like a one alt wire, something like that, heavier. Maybe I can go thinner, like instead of like a one alt, which would be like a zero gauge, I could run like a... 
like a uh, two gauge, one gauge, four gauge, something thick though. You know, maybe even thicker, kind of like this, maybe even a little thicker than this, and just run a set of wires, negative and positive, all the way to the rear and make a connection so that I can actually connect this wiring to the trailer and it would be enough gauge to just run everything even in the event of a total battery failure comment below and tell me which one you'd see if you want to see the latter then i gotta go and buy some wiring and some connectors and all that good stuff but it's a lot of things to think about a lot of potential problems even with that say we do it like that and corrosion gets into that connection because it's going to be a pretty simple connection corrosion gets in there and short circuits well then it blows the fuse we're gonna have to fuse the whole system and the system's gonna have to be fused to like 150 amps 200 amps something pretty high so that we could make sure we don't end up in a situation at the dump and the dump trailer won't go up but anyway my name is sean this is ds trucks see you guys in the next video over and out